Hey guys, what is up? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting episode of Doing Random Crap with Max MSP. Only this week, we're not going to be doing something random and useless, we're going to be doing something random and useful. We're going to be using the PFFT tilde object to do frequency domain signal processing. So, let's get it out of the way. I Already I can hear you asking yourself, just what, what is this FFT, to, uh, Sam? What, what is this FFT that I keep hearing so much about, that all the kids are always going on about? Uh, is it like, is it some new kind of drug? Is it like the Facebooks or the Yu-Gi-Oh's? No, it's not. What the FFT is, um, is it's a way of taking sound that looks like this and making it look like this. Uh, in other words, it takes you from the time domain to the frequency domain. Up here, we have the time domain. This is what the sound actually looks like. The peaks and the valleys here are the peaks and the valleys of the waveform itself. Um, this is what actually comes out of your speaker box and goes and slaps you in the ear bones. It looks like this. This is more akin to what you actually hear. This is the frequency domain representation. On the x-axis, we have each component frequency of the sound. In case you didn't know, sound is made up of frequencies, and you definitely should know that by this point. And on the y-axis, we have the amplitude, the intensity of each frequency that makes up that sound. The FFT is great because it's more akin to what we hear, and so there's lots of stuff that's useful to do in the frequency domain. Uh, the only drawback is that it's sort of annoying to go from the time domain to the frequency domain. If you're working with a live sound especially, then what you have to do is take the sound as it comes in, chop it into frames, window each frame, um, overlap each windowed frame in a way that avoids artifacts, and already it's starting to sound pretty boring and tedious. Um, Fortunately, Max has a built-in object called PFFT tilde that handles all that boring technical nerd crap for you. So you can feel like a musician and not a boring technical nerd like me. Um, so anyway, here's how PFFT. PFFT works a lot like poly tilde in that you have to make a new subpatch and then when you make a PFFT tilde object, it will load up that subpatch to do the processing. So I make a new patcher and I'm going to make it big so you can see it. You don't have to make it big at home. I'm just making it big so you can see it. I'm going to zoom way in. Again, optional step, but awesome people like me do it. And then I'm going to save it as... Uh, I like to save my external patches in um, Max5, the application folder. Where is it? Max5, patches, templates. Um, and then I make a new folder with my initials, and I name all the objects uh, with my initials dot freak... Um, in this case, freak gate, because that's what we're going to be doing is gating certain frequencies. More on that in a second. Um, anyway, the SJT prefix is just so you don't prefix is just so you don't have name conflicts with the patches that already exist. But anyway, um, so like poly tilde, FFT, PFFT tilde um, takes. Uh, you need to define inlets and outlets. In this case, instead of being in tilde and out tilde, we have FFT in tilde and FFT out tilde. And the difference between these is that each one of these inlets is going to take the FFT of the sound as it comes in. It's going to take that sound and move, move it from the time domain to the frequency domain. Um, and right now, all I'm doing is taking the um, real input, hooking it up to the real output, and the imaginary input, and hooking it up to the imaginary output, making the sound go straight through. And some of you at home are going, all right, no big deal. And some of you are going, I'm sorry, real and imaginary? What, what the hell are you talking about? There's no, the sound is, look, calm down. It's going to be fine. Let me explain to you. It's not your fault. Whoever invented the FFT decided to choose the most, con the most confusing possible vocabulary to describe it. Um, so that's why we have this real imaginary crap. And I'll just run through it really quickly. I'll explain to you what's going on um, using my old friend Geometer Sketchpad. Uh, so, oh, crap. Don't want to visit the Learning Center. Do want to preview. Okay, so here's what's going on. Um, the Fourier transform takes sound that's in the time domain where each sound simply has an intensity value and moves it into the frequency domain, where each um, sound, each sound, each frequency has two components, um, has an amplitude and a phase. The amplitude of the sound, um, oh, crap. <laughs> crap. Oh, I suck at geometer sketchpad. Next week, a geometer sketchpad tutorial. Um, only not really. So what happens is uh, each sound has, a, has, has each frequency has an amplitude and a phase, uh, where the amplitude is the intensity of the sound, I'm sorry, of that frequency, and the phase is, uh, if you think of each frequency looking like a sine wave, it's just where you are in the sine wave. You can't actually hear phase, um, but it's important for um, pulling the sounds apart and putting them back together. Um, anyway, let's see if I can do this. Sweet, so far so good. Yes, 
Yes, epic. Okay, so here's what's going on. Allow me to explain. Um, the FFT gives you the amplitude and phase of each frequency, but it gives them to you indirectly. What it actually gives you are what it calls real and imaginary components, but it, you can think of real and imaginary components um, as nothing more than um, the x and y coordinates of a point on a circle. So here's a point on a circle. It has this x coordinate, uh, which is about 10 here, and a y coordinate that's about 8. These are the real and imaginary components of that frequency. It also has a distance from the center. That distance from the center is the amplitude. It also has an angle, this angle here, around the circle. That's its phase. So as I move this point around, what you're seeing are all different points that have approximately the same amplitude but radically different phase. And you can also see that they have very different x and y, very different real and imaginary values. So in other words, what you're really working with are amplitude and phase. You're given real and imaginary because it just happens to be how the FFT is computed, um, but don't worry about that. What you're really working with is amplitude and phase. Real and imaginary are just X and Y coordinates or Cartesian coordinates of amplitude and phase, which are the polar coordinates of each frequency component. Hopefully that made sense. Anyway, jumping right back into it, if I save this and then hop over to my other patch, um, here is a sound file. It's a sound clip of me, or rather of some people I know giggling. Let's make sure it's not too loud. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah, great, people giggling. Um, no doubt at my expense. And now if I make an FFT, PFFT tilde SJT dot freak gate, I type so loud, freak gate. Uh, since it just passed all that sound straight through, we should just hear the output now. We should hear that laughter again. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Sweet! So we're doing everything correctly. Um, how much time have we already wasted doing nothing? We, well, it's not too bad. Alright, so let's jump back to the patch. Now, here's what we're going to do. Um, you've probably made a filter in the past. You've probably worked with filters before. And the way most filters work is like this. You've got some noise coming in, and you got your low-pass filter here and your low-pass filter is centered around, um, I don't know, a million hertz, and so it sees a sound at a million and one hertz, and it's like, a million and one hertz, go ahead, you're awesome, get in. And it sees a sound at 50 hertz, and it's like, 50 hertz? No, fuck no, I don't think so, get the fuck out. Um, and so 50 hertz doesn't get to come through the filter, fine. Uh, what we're gonna do is make something that's similar but different. We're gonna make an amplitude filter. And the way an amplitude filter works is it takes each frequency as it comes in, and it says, all right, frequency, are you above a certain loudness? If so, go right ahead. Are you below a certain loudness? No, I don't think so. You can get back in line. Um, and that's all it's gonna do, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be really great. So, sound comes in here. Here's the real and imaginary component. We use an object called cartupol, or cartupol, to move from real and imaginary to amplitude and phase. Um, then we're going to check if the amplitude is greater than a given value. If it's greater than a given value, we're going to pass it through uh, this outlet. And if it's less than a given value, we're going to pass it through this outlet. Simple as that. Um, in one, and that goes into this greater than, amplitude goes in here, and now, before we pass the amplitude out this outlet, we're first going to multiply it by whether or not the sound was less than the number we provided here. So if the amplitude is less than a certain value, the output here will be 1, and when we multiply the amplitude coming out of car to Paul by 1, it will stay whatever value it was before, and it goes gets passed straight out to this FFT out object um, after going through a pole to car to send it from um, polar back to Cartesian coordinates or in other words, from amplitude and phase back to um, uh, real and imaginary. And also over here, I'm going to do um, take the output of this, take one minus the output of this, and that's equivalent to knotting it. So now we're looking at uh, this, the output of this will be one whenever the amplitude is greater than whatever value we pass in this inlet. Um, and if I multiply the amplitude, oops, if I multiply the amplitude by that value, uh, that will be 1 when the other one is 0. Okay, another pull to car. This just goes straight out. And of course we need the phase from over here. And over here. That's not quite where I wanted it. And this is a big mess of patch cords, but you can work it out in your own time. And it's pretty simple what we're doing anyway. So I'm going to save this, jump back over here. And if, oh my lord. If I um, 
make this guy again. Now we have um, things above a certain threshold coming out here and below a certain threshold coming out here. And if we just go ahead and duplicate these, um, now I have two of these frequency gates and I'm gonna hook this outlet up to this outlet. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is grab frequencies in a certain range. So I have my R slider over here. This R slider is going between zero and one, and this is just some scaling. I found that if you take the output between zero and one, raise it to the 3.5th power and multiply by 45, that's a pretty reasonable range to work with. Um, those are values I pulled right out of my ass. Um, they happen to work well in this case. You can work it out on your own. Um, anyway, I'm gonna hook this one up here. Is that right? Yes, and this one up here. So what's happening now is the low value is gonna come out this outlet. And so I'm saying take the sound and pass everything that's above the low value. All those values are going in here, and now this frequency gate is taking everything that comes out of here, and it's going to give me everything that is lower than the high value. So in other words, what's happening is I'm only passing frequencies in a certain range. So here's the whole, oh my, that's, wow, that's so far removed from what I wanted. Um, here's the whole, here's what happens if I use the whole frequency range, basically. <laughs> See, all the frequencies oh are getting through. But now, what if I take a really <laughs> tiny range? Can you see? It's hard to see, but only frequencies that are at a certain amplitude are getting through. And if I move this thing down, oops. Now you can see only really quiet frequencies are really quiet frequencies are getting through. If I move it up, now look, only the loudest frequencies are getting through. That's pretty cool. Listen to that effect. It's a really weird effect. I think that sounds pretty weird and pretty cool. Um, all right, so we really should stop. Uh, and if you've watched it to this point and you're bored, yeah, go ahead and do something else. But I'm going to show you something else really quick that's also pretty useful. So I don't know if you can hear, but the sound that we're playing sounds sort of um, bubbly. There's sort of frequencies popping in and out. And it's sort of like, what's going on? It's kind of artifacty. Listen again. You can hear sort of bubbling. And if I bring this thing up, the bubbling is really intense. See that? Frequency is popping in and out. Um, we can do something about that. What we can do about that is use the Vectral object. Um, Vectral is a really sexy object, and what Vectral does um, is it... <laughs> well, I don't even know. Vectral is like um, the slide tilde object, or the ramp smooth object, or the... Um, uh, delta clip object, I think, and what what, what all, all those do is those um, smooth out values, uh, smooth out signal values. Vectoral is the same thing, but it treats each um, each signal frame. Jesus, all right, I can do this. It treats each number in one DSP frame as a separate stream. So in other words, um, sound and max. I, I I know you know this already, but sound and max passes through not um, one signal value at a time, but in blocks, chunks called frames. And in the case of the FFT, the PFFT, you can define how big those frames are. In this case, they're going to be 256 samples. Um, so what Vectral does is maintains each of those as a separate um, piece and will smooth out each one individually. So now what that means we can do is take, you see the output here, this less than tilde. I'm going to, instead of passing those straight through, pass that into this in the rightmost inlet of Vectral, and then back out here and here. And now it's going to smooth those values. So instead of jumping, instead of each frequency jumping from being on or off, it's going to ramp continuously from um, on to off or off to on. Uh, it's, I'm going to add another inlet so I can set the mode, whether it's ramp smooth or slide or whatever. And then you also have to pass into the left and middle inlets of Vectral um, the bin index, uh, which bin you're working with. Uh, anyway, so that's the word I should have used from the very beginning, is, that is, is bin. Vectral will smooth each bin individually, and remembers the history of each bin, not of the whole signal. Um, so this means that if I now jump back over to this one, and remake each of, oh god, remake each of these gates, or reload each one of these gates, and now I add a slide to two. It's gonna now take two DSP frames to slide, um, to turn a frequency on or off. Uh, for each frequency will slide on or off over the space of two DSP frames. Let's see what that sounds like. 
Um, apparently. <laughs> oh my god. See, these are still hopping in, but they're hopping in and out much more slowly. If I make this, say, 40 and 40. Oh my god. Now there's, we've lost all that bubbliness. Oh my god. We've actually cut a lot of the noise um, and lost a lot of bubbliness. Oh my god. Wow, that actually doesn't sound. Huh, oh my god. Huh. Huh. I got, sorry, I got kind of lost there just messing around with it. But anyway, that's slide tilde. And notice we totally got rid of all that um, poppling. That's a combination of popping and crackling um, and artifacting. Anyway, so that's, that's there you go. There's an improvement to the frequency gate that you could actually download off the internet instead of having to build it yourself. Um, so there you go, frequency gating. Um, it's a much more powerful technique than I let on in this video, and I wish I had more time to show you some of the cool stuff you can do with it. But there you go, um, an introduction to PFFT, to frequency, Fourier transforms, amplitude phase, real imaginary sound. Um, a whole new, a beautiful world of sound opens up to you, unfurls like the petals of a lotus. And with that, viewer, I leave you. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. I hope you enjoy every, not only my tutorials, but everything in your lives, because life is beautiful. And thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, circles. Why do I turn off this thing? There we go.